What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with Hogsports.com, and this is your Arkansas versus San Jose State primer. All right, as we before we get started, as always, everybody, I want to give you a reminder that there's plenty of ways to watch and listen. Facebook Live, go ahead and throw us a thumbs up if you like the content that we're delivering at Hogsports.com and Hogsports Live, available on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. Throw us a like and be sure to hit that notifications bell after you subscribe so you're notified anytime that we upload a new video. Available on Apple Podcasts. Throw us a five-star rating and a review. Say something nice about us to get the message out to other people. We want people to see Hog Sports Live whenever they search Arkansas Razorbacks. Also available on Spotify and Stitcher. Uh, hogsports.com is just one dollar right now for your first month so if you like the kind of content that we're bringing with hog sports live the main reason that we do this is to get our message out about our website it's just one dollar right now for your first month uh, and then regular price after that or you can sign up for a year take 30 percent off your first year and get a seven day free trial with that so find out what you're missing right now uh, for your number one insider source on the razorbacks keith grayson is going to join us here in a little bit this is going to be a very feedback driven show so we're going to answer your questions um obviously arkansas play in san jose state this week so that's not it's not going to incite too much excitement but obviously you want to see arkansas come out there and take care of business uh so this is really this is the the last kind of game before it starts to kind of hit the fan so to speak uh so you got san jose state at 6 30 p.m donald w reynolds razorback stadium on sec network and then you get a bye week or no, excuse me, not a bye week, but you get Texas A&M after that um, at 11 a.m. This is a, a Texas A&M game. The attendance is like going down every single year. It's been a very interesting topic of conversation here lately. You've had the Texas A&M athletic director, you know, kind of indicating that maybe they should move away from that. Uh, I know a lot of Arkansas fans, we ran a poll on our Facebook page earlier, and 67% of Razorback fans said – that they'd like to see the game moved to a home-and-home. Home. I would like to see it moved to a home-and-home. Home. I mean, I like Dallas and everything, but it's just gotten a little bit stale playing a conference game there every year. Uh, I want to go to Kyle Field. I want to see the new Kyle Field. I want them to have to come up to, to Fayetteville. I mean, they've lost seven games in a row, including four in overtime. It's a, been a pretty split crowd for that game, but it's it's a little bit tilted towards uh, towards Texas a and I mean, as you would expect, it's, it's a couple hours closer to their campus. Uh, and there's more Texas A&M fans in Texas, obviously. So then you get the bye week, and then it's Kentucky, and that's a huge one at Kentucky. Auburn, Alabama, Mississippi State. It's a tough stretch right there. And then you get Western Kentucky, then a bye week. So that's, you know, maybe a little bit of time to gather yourself there and then a, an important game at LSU. And then, of course, Missouri. That could be a game where you're, like, trying to get to a bowl game. Missouri's bowl game is Little Rock because they're not eligible this year. So just a kind of a look at what's ahead here on the docket. Um, just looking at San Jose State, Josh Love returns at quarterback. They've got they used two quarterback. Nick Nick Nash is the younger guy; he's more of a dual threat. But Josh Love uh, is thirty seven to sixty one for a hundred or excuse me for four hundred thirteen yards, three touchdowns, and no interceptions so far this season. Um, you know they're they're not an exceptionally good team. They're not an exceptionally good, also a Mountain West Conference team. But this is a game where you want to see Arkansas really just stomp these guys, just hammer them into the ground, get a lot of young guys in there, some action. Everybody wants to see K.J. Jefferson at some point. This would be maybe a good game for him. Get those young defensive backs a little bit more experience because you know you're going to need them at some point. So this is maybe an opportunity game to get some of those young guys in. The last thing you want to hear – at the end of this one is we were very vanilla. You know, we didn't show them everything. A win is a win. Happy, just happy to get the win. That's not what you want to hear. You want to, you want to, you want to see Arkansas put up, you know, like sixty points, at least fifty points on these guys, and uh, and really just be in control, jump out on them early, and then be able to play some of the younger guys. Get Ben Hicks back in there for some action. I know everybody wants to see KJ, but really. I mean, you need to make sure that, that Ben Hicks is ready because if something happens to Starkle, it's going to be Hicks that goes in there. So, they're pretty big offensive line, almost 300 pounds average across the board. Good running back, some good wide receivers. So, I mean, again, this is not a game where we want to sit here and focus. I mean, people are uh, attendance uh, on this podcast and, and show is just going to drop if I start talking about all the, the players for San Jose State because the bottom line is they're not going to be as talented as what Arkansas is about to see. This is a game where – you know, one more opportunity to get things into sync a little bit. 
uh, build momentum. They've been talking about Uncle Mo and Coach Mo and Big Mo. That's been the talk. You want to keep that going into this Texas A&M game because I think that one's going to be interesting. I'm not going to – probably at this point, I, I know I'm not going to pick Arkansas to beat Texas A&M. I'm not going to p- pick them to beat – probably any SEC team, SEC team until I actually see them do it uh, or get really encouraged by them. But the Texas A&M game, if I'm going to pick a, them to, like, upset somebody, you know, other than Missouri or Mississippi State or, uh, you know, one of those games or Kentucky, a, a game that you think that they might have a somewhat decent chance of, of actually competing and winning in, I might pick Texas A&M just because of all the things that are going on around it. They played them tough last year. It's been seven years in a row, so they're definitely due. We've been saying that for a few years. Four of the games have been decided by a touchdown, three of them in overtime. And Chad Morris is a Texas A&M alum. John Chavis was at Texas A&M before Arkansas. Rakeem Boyd, former Texas A&M player. Nick Starkle, former Texas A&M player. So there's a lot, you know, kind of to go on uh, behind the scenes there. And that matters in college football. It really does. Outside the uh, the Arkansas San Jose State game, some interesting SEC games. Not a very good week last week, so some better games this week. You've got Southern Miss at Alabama. Alabama favored by minus thirty nine and a half. I look for them to cover that one. LSU at Vanderbilt. LSU's minus twenty one. Vanderbilt's not off to a very good start and a tough schedule to start things out with. That one. Both those games are at eleven a.m. Uh, and LSU favored by 21. I, I think they could cover that one too. Tennessee at Florida at minus 14. That's an interesting one. Tennessee did have a nice win over Chattanooga. I mean, it's it's Chattanooga, but it was 45 nothing. You know, so that's that's about as good as you could hope for there. Florida favored by minus 14 with their backup quarterback. Interesting game. Cal at Ole Miss. Cal favored by two. Cal's ranked. This all these are 11 o'clock games. Auburn at Texas A&M, that's the big one to watch. That's at 2.30. So before your Arkansas-San Jose State game, you definitely want to tune into this because that's two opponents coming up on Arkansas' schedule, including the next opponent. Texas A&M's minus four. What is Auburn, like eighth, I think? I don't have the rankings here. I think Texas A&M is 17th. So that's that's a good battle right there. And obviously, if you're an Arkansas fan, what you're looking for is a long, hard-fought battle probably with Texas A&M losing, getting dejected a little bit at home. That's probably what you're hoping for if you're an Arkansas fan for for the next game and then for Arkansas to come out of this one, you know, clean and healthy. Uh, Then Kentucky at Mississippi State at 3 p.m. So you can flip back and forth if you do like I do, get on your Apple TV on the ESPN app and, you know, bring up a bunch of games at once and you can easily toggle in between those. So Kentucky at Mississippi State, that's another intriguing one. Two future opponents, Mississippi State favored by seven and a half in that one. Uh, And Kentucky with their backup quarterback too. So, and then South Carolina at Missouri. Arkansas doesn't play South Carolina, but does play Missouri and that's at 3 p.m. San Jose State at Arkansas, as we mentioned, at 6.30. Notre Dame at Georgia, that's an intriguing one. Arkansas plays Notre Dame next year. Uh, But that's an interesting one. Georgia favored by minus 13. So pretty interesting slate of games this this weekend. Pretty excited about it. And I like the 630 game because I get to watch all those other games or at least, you know, up until halftime or stuff before I get going um, for the Arkansas game. So Danny West got a nice article on football offers. There's a lot of football offers that have gone out lately. Arkansas is obviously in the middle of the evaluation period so they can go out on the road and and watch prospects can't talk to them, but they can they can get a good look at them. Um, so Danny's got a, a breakdown on – this is a free article also, so if you want to go to hawgsports.com and read up on the latest offers by Arkansas recruiting, you can do so there. All right, so Arkansas has got baseball tomorrow. Yes, baseball. Uh, play Oklahoma at 7.30 p.m. Uh, they'll have uh, media availability today. Pete Roulier, our man, will be there. So go to hogsports.com later. I think that starts at like 1.30 or something like that. Uh, so they'll have media availability to talk about the exhibition game versus Oklahoma. Also an exhibition game, October 12th versus Oklahoma State. And that one's at noon. And basketball right around the corner, too. I mean, we're looking at, what, October 5th for the red-white game. I mean, that's right around the corner in Barnhill Arena. I think that's going to be a really – I remember back when I was in college, 96, when I enrolled at the University of Arkansas, we'd go to a red-white game, the freaking arena would be packed. I mean, it's not like that anymore. And that was for midnight. It was a midnight madness type of deal, and they'd fill up the arena or at least the lower bowl. So things are a lot different now. All right, let's check in on a few questions, see where we are there. 
Parkview Mustang says, Woo Pig Suey. Bart Wilkinson says, Why did Burke sit our sit our sit out yesterday at practice? Can't find anything anywhere. So Traylon left Tuesday's practice about twenty five minutes in. He started heading to the Walker Pavilion. Didn't look like anything was wrong with him, wasn't limping or anything, and then wasn't out there today. So I'm guessing maybe he's getting some kind of treatment. And this is probably the week to do that. I mean, you're going to hear a lot of coach speak about we're worried about us, we're doing this for us, yada, yada, all that kind of stuff. But um, this, you know, it's a very important game. But at the same time, Colton Jackson's not practicing this week. I think Colton's just, you know, I don't remember him going down. I think he was in there the last series. But, you know, he has had a foot deal. You know, we know Burks has the knee issue and stuff like that. So um, just, uh, you know, I I don't think there's anything too serious. Um, Trey Knox was back out there yesterday. Did we go over injuries? Here's the injury report. So, Trey Knox is back out there in full Wednesday. Bumper pool was back in full. Monteric back in full. Chase Harrell back in full. Jamario was in full pads, has a knee brace on. And Hayden Henry back in full, even though Chad Moore said before practice, he was doubtful for practice. He trotted out there in full go. Uh, Colton Jackson obviously was not out there, as I mentioned. Corlin Jackson wasn't out there either. Traylon Burks wasn't out there. We know Zach Williams has a knee issue. Uh, Dalton Hyatt um, – Listed as a hamstring flu. That thing's interesting. I mean, it's been a long time since we've seen Dalton Hyatt, like the second day of spring of, of fall camp. Deion Stewart obviously out for the season. Noah Gatlin out for the season. Dorian Gerald out for the season. And still no Jordan Jones with a high ankle sprain and had surgery on that. So that's that's the latest injury report. Sorry if I didn't mention that earlier. Bobby Swain says, what's up, Trey? Hogs win big Saturday night. Obviously, you hope so. Chad Everett says, good afternoon. We're having a cool streak here in South Georgia, 86, but the gnats and the love bugs still suck. I know it. I know it. <laughs> I, want to stop, I want to stop thinking about the gnats in South Georgia. Nathan Moore says, Arkansas hasn't scored 60 since UT Martin in 2015. Does that change this Saturday? I don't think it will. I mean, I think they'll probably try to play as many young people as they can and maybe get into the uh, – Maybe get into the 50-point uh, range. I think 50 points, you should feel pretty good about that if they put that up on these guys. Of course, Colorado State's a much better team, and they put 55 on them. I'll probably pick it somewhere around that range, 52 to 14, something like that, 52-17 maybe. I mean, there's always the chance that you get a scrounge touchdown at the end if you're playing young people. Uh, so I can see them coming out with their scripted plays, maybe getting a touchdown early, and then maybe getting a touchdown late, maybe a field goal somewhere in between there. Bill Ferguson says, play another P5 non-conference game there every year, put A&M as home and home. I mean, that's a – here's the deal. I would rather just see them do home and home with a non-conference. There's this, been this trend lately to play these non-conference games uh, in neutral environments, and, and that's fine if you move it around. But I don't want to get worn out on going to Arlington. I mean, I feel like it's just been like – you know, just, I don't know. I look forward to the game, but I don't feel like it's as exciting and new as it should be. You know, like the Notre Dame game, I'm looking, I'm really looking forward to that. I mean, um, playing Missouri in Arrowhead, I think that's cool, you know, to do that next year. But I don't know. I just think they need to mix it up. I mean, I look at, I don't know. Everybody's got different opinions on there, but I think most people, 67% of people, uh, out of 2,000 people that were polled, I feel pretty, sh- you know, strongly that Arkansas should move that game away from Arlington. Parkview Mustang says, hope we're not overlooking this opponent. All I've heard is info about Texas a and i I'm totally overlooking this opponent. I am freely admitting that. Now, the team can, obviously, but I can. I can overlook San Jose State. And everybody should be really disappointed this one comes out like a 20-13, to 13, like the Portland State game. If it comes out 20-13, to 13, you should be absolutely – all right. <laughs> I mean, there's no no reason for that to happen. Bobby Swain says, I like it in Dallas helps recruiting when we win. Here's the deal, Bobby. They haven't won in seven years, so it's hard to qualify that. I mean, they won three years in a row, the first three years, and they moved it to a home and home and Arkansas in that stretch. Ever since Texas A and M has been in the SEC, every you know, things have gone poorly for Arkansas. They really have. I mean, it's been the worst seven years in Arkansas football history. Um, and this is mainly a Brett Bielema thing, but recruiting was terrible in Texas during that stretch. I mean, Chad Morris came onto our roster with 10 Texas players on scholarship. I mean, that's that's terrible. There's no excuse for that. Uh, they took away the LSU game and replaced Arkansas with Texas A&M. 
for that weekend, although Arkansas still gets the Friday game. I mean, what's been so great? And meanwhile, Texas a and is now the number one revenue school in, uh, in, in the country. So, yay, good move. Appreciate that one, Jeff. Justice Max says, <laughs> blame Jeff Long for everything. Justice Max says, if only Arkansas had other rivals in Texas to play a non-conference game in Dallas. Hmm. Well, they do get Texas, not this year, but the next year, I think. Is that Texas? I think so, in Fayetteville. Russ McNally says, SJS17 hogs whatever they want. I'm not sure what that means. Please don't talk in shorthand, people. <laughs> it makes it difficult. Avi Green says, you mean San Jose State this time, not Portland? Yes, I do. Chris Burris says, need need to not let them score, right? I mean, I think they're probably going to score. I thought Grant Morgan said it best. He wants to beat them 173 to nothing. I don't know how he came out to 173. Seen all of Hicks, I need to see. That's true, Bobby. But at the same time, if something were to happen with Starkle, if he had to come out because he got took a shot or his helmet came off or something, it's going to be Hicks that goes in the game. And I've seen a lot of people say K.J. Jefferson. I love K.J. Jefferson's potential, but he's just he's just not ready. And you can talk – there's every media person that you'll talk to who goes to practices regularly will tell you the same thing that I'm telling you. He's just not ready. Throws a great ball sometimes. Other times, you know, it's just dramatically over, over the receiver's head. And on top of that, you know, he's going to have a re- reduced playbook. But I want to see him Saturday. I mean, if we can see him with a re- reduced playbook – you know, running some RPO stuff. I think I think we could see some. We could have some fun out there watching him in the fourth quarter. Lonnie O'Brien says I was impressed by the fourth quarter play by the Hogs. Absolutely, 21-0 held them to 34 points. Tony Ball says need a shutout. Be nice. Hello, LaQuentin Ingram. Bobby Swain says you know guys know what I need to get up Keith Grayson. I told Keith it would be about 15 minutes, and that was at least 25 minutes ago when I told him that. So. Keith always has interesting things to say. You know, he's kind of a – you never know what's going to come out of the kid's mouth. <laughs> so, I always find him really entertaining. So, we'll bring him on here right now. Good morning, Sunshine. Hey, Keith. How you doing? Pretty good. Have you come off your 9-3 and three, uh, record yet that you predicted before the season? Is that what I predicted? Yeah, yeah. For those, for those uh, who don't – no, Keith. He, uh, you know, sometimes talks out of his rear end, and uh, I did predict him to go six and six, and said they were better. Off, they were more likely to go five and seven than than seven and uh, four. Uh, I was literally just seven, listening to you say seven and five. We're skipping over. Your, I'm listening to yeah. you say you're skipping over San Jose. And I am. You just got it. Thirty-eight, twenty-eight hogs in in Dallas. That's what you heard. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm a Razorback fan. I can as I've said, extremely easily when. when as I said the other day, um, people hear what they want to hear, and some people aren't that bright. <laughs> yeah, we both had them losing old bets. We did. Yeah, um, I, I think they had a chance to win to beat Ole Miss, but so what do you what do you think about this game, Keith? And or do you want to just talk about Texas A and M? Well. Yeah, I mean, I don't know anything about San Jose State. I told you I was going to be watching, breaking down the film for the next 48 hours, which didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Um, I I know nothing about them. I know they're giving up like 200 yards a game on the grounds. Um, They were the worst team in the Mountain West last year. They won one game last year. Yeah. So that means we're probably going to win by three points. Colorado State won three games last year and beat Arkansas. But this is a different Arkansas team. I mean, they finally got somebody at quarterback. You got to you got to be feeling good about quarterback situation, right? Well, what's the weather going to be like? I, I I see a little forecast of rain on Saturday. Last I looked, it was like twenty percent at kickoff and seventy seven degrees. That was yesterday, I think, that I looked at it. We know that may not be accurate. So I I just well and on the grass field, we'll see how that holds up too. Yeah, they got some drainage issues. It'll be kind of a test of that as well, and. You know, just like I think the Portland State game, I probably didn't give it enough credit as being like a look ahead game to Ole Miss because mm-hmm. the, all the focus was on, well, we thought it was on Ole Miss. And um, just for the people that are talking about the quarterback controversy at the beginning of the season, you go with the guy that you trust, and they trusted Ben Hicks. That's, that's pretty much it. When you talk about the talent and the playbook, they trusted Ben Hicks. And for coaching, that is 
a huge factor. Cannot trust him to get us into the right set. If we end up in the mistake that Starkle made on that trick play, I know it's been beaten like a dead horse over and over where, you know, he goes in and he, he didn't know which side of the field is go, goes to the, 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 the call is in the, I mean, the, the play is in the call. So if he doesn't know to throw it to the nine instead of the seven or the mm-hmm. five or whatever they have, then that's on the kid. That's not on, you know, that's, that, that was on Starkles a little bit. So you, that's you the many, trust factor. Do you want me to tell you though, what the cold, hard coaching move is there though? is to put all your eggs in with Nick Starkle in camp and everything and get him ready because he's obviously more talented. What are your thoughts on that? What are your thoughts on that though? If it are what, let me ask you this, a coach that may be a little colder, like a Bobby Petrino, what do you think Bobby would have done? Um, no, he's, he's definitely going, he's going, he's going with Nick for sure. Straight out the gate. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think they came out with the wrong quarterback. I just, I just, I think they did. I think that they could have, you know, put more time into into getting Starkle ready. I get, I get, I get the Hicks deal because he knows the offense. He's very comfortable. He's, he was there the whole spring. He helped take, you know, everything to probably a different level in terms of practicing in the spring what they're able to do. But and he got beat out. You know, he's, he's been beat out by a more talented quarterback. And, and I, I get, you know, what the coaches think about because arm strength doesn't mean everything. But what we see now to Starkle so far is this guy is very accurate, deadly accurate, has a great arm, and is not afraid to take chances. And I, I loved what Trey Knox said about him. He said he's a high risk, excuse me, medium risk, high reward type of quarterback. And that's what you have to have. Keith Grayson, by the way, for those who don't know, is um, does high school football coach. I guess that's your your side gig. You you flip houses and then uh, you, you're defensive coordinator. Is that right, Keith? No, 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 no. I'm I'm DB's coach this year. I'm DB's. not. I'm not. Uh, everybody. I've been pe- getting people asking me if I'm the DC for uh, a team that, and and the coach listens to this podcast, so I'm not going to bag on the team uh-huh. or the uh, performance at this point. We've had it. We we're kind of in a. It's a. It's, I coached at a high school that hires real estate brokers for coaches. Yeah. Let's just put it that way. Why? Uh, why were you demoted? <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't demoted. It sounds like I, a it's demotion. Just a new school. Oh, it's a new and, school. Uh, okay. I have. I got a. The, the head coach calls is the defensive coordinator, mm-hmm. and uh, is his uh, one of his friends is the OC. So um, that's that's all. So it wasn't you know. a demotion. Just so. to be clear, he was not demoted. No, so, and I uh, start rumors so out there school, about Keith Grayson my, being demoted to DB <laughs> coach. My high school coaching career has was a uh, varsity linebackers coach, JV defensive coordinator, freshman head coach, two years off, and now I'm uh, back in it. And uh, I just the, – the way that my schedule works out is just like it's – it's you're setting yourself up for an early death when you're doing the – I mean, it's just I'm working 80 hours a week and losing my brain and yeah. trying to – and then doing the watch parties on the weekends. It's just, you know – yeah. Got a girl moved into the house. It's Uh-oh. just it's chaos. It's chaos, dude. Mass hysteria. So, so you're still organizing watch parties. Keith lives in in Phoenix. Uh, still organizing watch parties out there, um, despite your, um, I guess, failures as the um, former president and uh, founder of the Arizona Razorback Club. Well, my first the first problem was I I got hooked up with the alumni association, which is a bunch of nerds that focus on the college. And I don't care about, I don't care about college. I care about football. Mm-hmm. So, um, <laughs> I should have been linked up with the foundation. So, that's that your new, that's thing. your new tagline. I don't care about college. I care about football. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the, yeah. It's what Nolan Richardson said. I'm not, I'm not here for degrees. I'm here to get people to the NBA. Yeah. Let's not get it twisted. That's a profession. <laughs> I don't think that Nolan said that. <laughs> no, in, my, in my experience with college has been different too i mean uh not to brag or anything but my month of october um my that, that i'm about to have in real estate has nothing to do with my college experience mm-hmm. and it went a degree would not have made and you know i'd be some desk jockey you know punching a clock uh some corporation instead i'm you know i'm walking barefoot out in the in my uh front yard right now <laughs> with the uh, doing whatever the hell I want 
and everything's kind of in autopilot. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, that's 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 enough about me. I, I don't want to. I definitely don't want to put too many of my um, thoughts out there in the public. Uh, yeah. They, they could definitely come back to, you to get, bite me, especially in the positions that I'm in. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think about this Texas A and M Auburn game, Keith? Uh, it's, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I, I, you know, I, we'll see if Bo Nix is for real and, and, uh, if, if Kellen Mond can put something together, um, I, I like the Auburn defense more than, more than anything, more, more than any unit in this game. And, um, uh, we'll see. I ought to be, to be honest, I haven't watched a whole lot of other teams play other than Arkansas. And that's kind of how it goes. Mm-hmm. I, I don't get, um, you know, I'm, I'm working Saturdays still, so I don't really get a lot of time. I just, you know, and this Saturday is no different. I, my mom turned 60, and so we got a big thing planned for her, and so it's going to run right up until the end of the game. So um, there's just always something to do. I don't I don't have a lot of free time to watch stuff like that. I'll try to go back and uh, and watch as many games as possible. But, yeah, it's, it's – man, I hope Auburn loses, though. Just I want to I wanna hear – the Bob Stoops rumors heat up and, and, <laughs> and, and somebody's going to pay Gus $30 million to leave. I mean, yeah. what a, what a world that is. Yeah. I mean, that would be entertaining, but I, don't you think that Arkansas needs Texas A&M to lose that one? I hope everybody gets, you know, season ending injuries. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> let them, let them just blow each other up. <laughs> wow. So, <laughs> wow. Well, maybe not to that extent. Maybe just one game, one game injuries for the A and M players, and something that's a little nagging for the Auburn guys. How yeah. about that? All right. <laughs> Let's not be as morbid. I won't be as morbid as that. But everybody's thinking. That. <laughs> Chris Turner says he's new to this show, but liking it so far. I wonder if he stayed around for uh, for your segment, Keith. Who? <laughs> Chris Turner. Chris Turner. Chris Turner. No. Oh. No, I don't know that. I don't know that Clint watches the show or not. Scotty Matlock says, my bet is Portland State will have proven tougher to beat them than San Jose State. Adam Mills says, Trey, what do you think would be an acceptable record for Arkansas this season? I've said before the healthy way to watch this, despite people calling me a homer and um, all kinds of different things. It's amazing how people have twisted my words around. But um, I've said you know, from the very beginning that the healthy way to approach this season is to look at a young team, watch them grow take some punches, and uh, get to a bowl game. I hope they get to a bowl game. I think that's the healthy way to look at the season. We got two freshman receivers that are going to break every freshman record in the book. Yes. I mean, they're setting it. They're already on pace. They're going to break it by the Texas A&M game. They'll be the two freshman leading receivers in Arkansas history by the Texas A&M game in receptions. Well, maybe not receptions. I think it's 30-something and then yardage for sure. So, I mean, those, those, those are two NFL players right mm. there. So, Fildon Mitchell says, how did Strongberg fly under the radio? I saw his video, and it was way better than his offer, and now we're seeing seeing this with his play on the field. So, Strongberg's an interesting story, Fildon. So, he was way overweight. What was he like? He was like 320 pounds for his size, and he was, I mean, he was, he was way overweight. Uh, but he still looked good on video. And then last, not this past summer, but the summer before, he went to one of the Nike camps and had the highest vertical jump. This is like well over 300 pounds. Had the highest vertical jump for any player 280 pounds plus in the entire country. So if you notice, ESPN ended up ranking him a four-star and 24-7 ranked him a four-star, but Rivals didn't. Rivals doesn't have access to the um, to the opening regionals. Because they do their rivals, own, their own do- they're not they're not doing that Arkansas bump anymore. Well, they don't they don't have access to, <laughs> yeah, the Arkansas bump like that's a real thing. They don't have access to um, that camp, so I don't maybe they didn't see him there. But then you know he drops his weight down to 280 pounds for a senior season, and puts out that senior video, and everybody's like, oh crap, this guy can play. And what what did he, what's his explosion? What's his vertical? And that's why you saw ESPN eventually bump him to a four star and. Um, 24-7, but his plan was actually, he was committed to Tulsa at the time, but he wasn't going to Tulsa. His plan was actually to gray shirt and enroll at Oklahoma before Arkansas's offer came along. So, And his goal was just to get here and hopefully make the travel squad, maybe see a little bit of action, but still red shirt. That was his goal. And then in camp, he's like going up against Sosa and Isaiah Nichols, TJ Smith, and he's like, I can block these guys. And the coaches saw it too. And uh, that's the rest is history. But uh, he's still let's, just let's 275, so. 279 pounds. 
But he's going to get up to, you know, he'll probably be 295 or so before his career is over. Not a huge guy, but, you know, smart, well-built. You know, he's he's going to be a good player. Really comes off the ball well. It's scary. I, I hate, you know, there, I don't really get excited watching freshmen, true freshman offensive linemen. It's no. more of a fear factor yeah. than anything. Skill positions are one Well, thing, there's no but, question. As good as the kid may end up being, it, it definitely identifies that there's a hole there. And I wonder, like Shane Clinton was a guy that ran all fall camp except for his – or all of spring except for his injury – uh, and then came back, but was the starter at right guard. Looked like he was going to be the starter, and then you know, Fall Camp gets here, and you know he's slowly getting worked out. And I mean, he he comes in for kneel downs now. It's 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 kind of crazy how that's developed there at right guard. Yeah, and Myron Cunningham, Myron Cunningham is not an inside player. I, I mean, he was getting beat like a drum in the Portland yeah, State game. Needs to be out at tackle. And he was, and he's just confused. I mean, you got somebody on the outside, you don't know who you're supposed to get. Yeah, um, it's just it's a totally different position. So he is a tackle. He is. And a lot of the, the people saying like, "Hey, these JUCO guys are supposed to come in and help." Well, hell, you got two starters returning. Basically, well, I mean, I don't know if Wagner's really considered a starter returning, but he has started some games, and 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 he's a mountain of a dude. And Colton Jackson's a, a senior, so he's not you're not coming in to replace those guys right off the hoof. So they're just trying to work them in wherever they can get them in. Um, and if that the guard experiment was failed. So hopefully he can give them a, a blow on a, a tackle, but yeah, this is kind of a this is kind of an off week. Of course, we want to you know keep the keep the confidence going, and that's that's a real thing. I mean, that a lot of people that are complaining about the uh, party afterwards and everything. I mean, that's what that's what this whole thing is about. Oh yeah, things get lost in focus. Like we haven't been setting the world on fire lately and to be honest and this is not a dig at chad morris or anything but out of the games that he's won over his coaching career of those 18 games it's probably the third you know best win that he's had if you mm-hmm. look at it from a 2000 foot view so they have a right to be excited they've already matched the win total last year was you know through the third week of the season so let's let's go out and get another one and then keep it rolling but I, they got to put up some points they got it and I, it'd be awesome for the defense to just shut out I don't know if that's going to happen just because they they still have some containment issues on the edge and as much as everybody's you know talking about Hayden Henry being a badass at linebacker he gave up some long runs by not he was the contain guy a couple times mm-hmm. um, and and your boy that Italian dude Matteo Soli um <laughs> You know he he's he he kind of had a an off game as well, so that's we're thin over there. Well, what does it tell uh, you, Keith, if your best option at right end is a true freshman with one arm? Yeah, no, it's not it's not great. Getting I, I getting know. Jamario Bell back, I think, will help because he he can, you know, he Jamario's big dude, and hopefully he'll be able to anchor that end spot a little better and get him some contain when it's the DN's responsibility. What do you think about all this injury stuff? I mean, Jamario's back, but you've lost. Um, obviously, Dorian Gerald, and um, you know you've got some guys sitting out. Like I mentioned, Colton Jackson sitting out. Quillen Jackson's been out. Um, Traylon Burst didn't practice yesterday. I mean, it's a good week, I guess, to to kind of get those guys some. You know, coaches kind of talk out of both sides of the mouth. Like, you know, this is very important. We're worried about us. You know, we're going to go out there. You know, all this stuff. But at the same time, they're resting guys in practice this week, which they probably wouldn't do for a Texas A and M week. It's football, and it's part of it. That's why you know coaches should get three to four years because to turn things around. Because you got to replace, you got to build all the depth. You know, it doesn't get handled with one and a half recruiting classes. So you got mm-hmm. what is it? What's the number? Is it seventy-two sophomores, retro freshmen, freshmen on this? Is that it? Is that the? I think it was like forty-four percent freshmen. <laughs> period. Freshman, yeah, yeah redshirt freshman, freshman. If you add in a sophomore class, too, I want to say it's seventy-two out of the one hundred and ten. Yeah, because I don't think there's juniors on this team. There <laughs> might not be. Who's, who's yeah. a junior? So, yeah, next, no, next it's, uh, <laughs> I'm I'm excited to see you know some some more points and kind of the and and to get that again. I'm I'm a numbers dork, so I'm looking at we're at thirty points a game on offense and 26 a game on defense. If we, if, you know, if it's, if the game is 38 to 14, then we're going to be up to 36 or 33 points a game and, and uh, 23 points a game on defense, 33 on offense. So that's, that's, that's what it needs to look like. We need a top 40 defense and, you know, and above 30 on offense to get to a bowl game. That's the way the numbers are going to work this season. 
and it's got to continue that way through SEC play. So as you get these, you know, go up against these offenses, they're rotating in first year quarterbacks with Kentucky, uh, Missouri, and um, Mississippi State. Then that's that's where we got to that's where we got to be. Those we got to go after those dudes, and hopefully they get more of that um, that dime pressure that Chavis has that we saw in that last series. The last two series, that was really messing with Colorado State. There's just, you know, you got Fouché blitzing off the edge. Um, Greg Brooks will, will come at, come in out of that. And they got, you know, people coming up the A gap. They're, they're coming from all over the place. In our base defense, which is probably where we're going to work a lot this week against San Jose State, it does not look that hot. It does not look that good. So yeah. that's what we need to work on to stop the run. But if we're going against pass-heavy teams – and they're running that dime package. That's where all the that's where all the turnovers are being created, and uh, all the sacks are coming from. Keith, so. there there are a lot of key juniors on this team. You kind of did a disservice to the junior class. Say that again. There's a lot of key juniors on this team. You got Ty Clary up front. You've got Nick Starkle, Raheem Boyd, Devion Warren, Grayson Gunner, Hayden Henry, Cameron Curl. That's some key juniors. I was just thinking about it. Yeah, they're. I mean, they're half of them were started out as walk-ons. They're so, that's true. The guys Clary, the guys you just named. Hayden, they were blue shirts technically, I guess, and two okay. and two transfers. You're right. Anyway, I just thought about that because I know people are going to be like, "There's a lot of juniors on this team. Got to watch what no, you say. Just, Fans I, will call I, you I, out." I talk. I talk in absolutes. There's zero <laughs> juniors on this entire football team. No juniors. And then I like to get corrected. Bobby so. Swain says Dory and Gerald will be missed coming off that edge. Absolutely. I mean, that's a big that's a big impact. I mean, losing him. It hurts McTelvin a game, hurts the edge, all that. Matt A. Worley says either Little Rock or Dallas, but not both, make a choice. What do you think on that Dallas game, Keith? I think that I think they I say keep the Little Rock game every other year. At the, at the end of the year, that's not going to be too impactful for recruiting, but you can't do both. You can't do Little Rock and Dallas. Hey, let's let's take some of the money we make from a home game and give the guy who has a high school stadium named after him in, in Texas a raise to keep Jeff Trailer. Let's let's do that. You want to recruit in Texas? Let's keep let's keep the Texas yeah. guys on staff instead of having the game in Dallas. The the Texas recruiting that has picked up recently has nothing to do with the game in the Cowboys stadium. No, it doesn't. It's, it's the coaches, bro. So it's yeah. Jeff Trailer and Chad Morris who are legends in that state. That in the is, high school that is something that frustrated the pure hell out of me about Brett. I mean, he he just threw his arms up in Texas. He's like, you got to talk a certain way to be able to recruit there. We're going to go up to Illinois and recruit guys. I mean, it's just like every time they had an assistant coaching change, it's like, dude, hire somebody from Texas. Hire someone from Texas. You don't want to also lose. Hire, also hire somebody that knows how to what to do with somebody that runs a four three seven at a camp. Hey, I'll tell you. I'll tell you this also, Keith. Um, you know, the, one of the downfalls of Brad is just got hiring bad assistants. I mean, um, you know, Reggie Mitchell. I, I hate to say he's bad because he's a nice guy, but I mean, you you had your last two running back coaches both left you for, to go to the NFL and you hired somebody who has no chance of getting hired by the NFL. Uh, Kurt Anderson to replace Sam Pittman. I mean, you know, Morris only lost one assistant last year, but that's not going to, that's not going to always be that way. He just has to, he doesn't make sure he continues to hire guys and, you know, losing a guy like Jeff trailer, you know, which people have, you know, people have talked about, you know, this is a guy that's possibly a head coach candidate at some point. I don't know if he's going to do that if Arkansas doesn't start having success. But, you know, losing a guy like that is comparable to losing a guy like Sam Pittman. The secret is you can't replace him with, um, you know, somebody, you know, a Reggie Mitchell, for example, or a Kurt Anderson like they replaced uh, replaced uh, Pittman with. You got anything what else? Do you think about the, what do you think about the Isaiah Simmons story? I haven't heard your take on that yet. Yeah, I mean, I'm not terribly surprised. I mean, a guy runs a four three seven um, and is two hundred pounds, and you don't know where you're going to play him. I mean, good lord, just get the guy on campus, you know? Well, being out <laughs> being out where I'm at in in Phoenix, and, and I you know my 
my girlfriend went to Pinnacle High School where Spencer Rattler graduated. Mm. That that was that's a non story. That's people making a yeah thinking that that like we missed out on Spencer Rattler was not going to come to Arkansas. That's yeah. his dad's deal. I'll tell you who deal. I'll tell you who was going to come to Arkansas though that they did the same thing with Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs, they could have gotten him. E.K. Franks wanted him badly, who was Arkansas's director of recruiting, but. Um, Reggie Mitchell, Bielema, they just eh, they didn't want to pull the trigger on him. Then here comes Alabama, and Alabama gets him. And next thing you know, he's a first round draft pick. We'll be all right. We'll get his brother. It's possible they're after him. I think if they bring in two, they might bring him. In. I, if they lose Rakeem Boy, that's gonna that's gonna be tough. But um, I wouldn't be opposed to seeing them try to bring in another top junior college player. All right, Keith, we're keep coming up here. Well, we're already past our time limit. We try to go 42 minutes. So, uh, any last right. words of wisdom from you? No. Well, I mean, you know, I, I don't like the I don't like the sports media. I kind of lump you in with that yeah. Arkansas sports media. So I, I have pet peeves. You, you ask, I mean, we go back and forth, and I always tell Trey that talk about is not a question. You can't say talk about to open up uh, SEC media days. Trey, you did, you did it at SEC media days. Talk about I did that. your feelings. <laughs> I don't know. I just made it. I probably just made it up. You did make it up. But, but reporters, say, every once in a say, while, probably one out of a hundred times, I might say something like that. If I don't know where, usually it's, it's if I don't know where I'm going with the, if I ask it, I don't know how to wrap it up. It's just that aw shucks uh, country boy way of, you know, trying to get to him. I, I know what it is. So now my, my new thing with Trey <laughs> That's not is really. to say like, He'll say, "Are you talking oh, about me like I'm not here?" Yeah, <laughs> it's a third person omnip- omnipotent. Yeah. Uh, no, so it's Trey. Trey will say that um, you know someone so and so is out with a foot, not, not like a broken foot or a, a you know a torn Achilles right. or something. Just he's out with a foot. That's that's a new the millennial. That is not new. You know where that you, you know who first started doing that at Arkansas? Who Orville Henry? No, Lou Holtz. That's a Lou Holtz thing. He's got a foot. Who? Lou Holtz would say that at Arkansas about injured uh, players. All I heard, I got a bad connection. All I heard oh. was my left foot. I thought you were talking about Tom Cruise. That is, Tom Cruise, that is Daniel Day-Lewis in my left foot. Uh, all right, Keith. All right. The man, won, the man won like three Academy Awards for crying out loud. What when did Tom you, Cruise when ever you, win? That's when after you putting out hit, when hit after hit. When you're covering women's softball, do not talk about the body part when they get pregnant. You can't say she's out with a fetus. All right. You can't say that. <laughs> talk to you later, Keith. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right. That's Keith Grayson. You knew something was going to slip in there. He just couldn't, just couldn't get out without saying something like that. All right, everybody. Sorry I couldn't get to your questions. If you want me to answer your questions all the time, then come sign up at hogsports.com, H-A-W-G sports.com. Again, one of the reasons we do this show is to get the message out there about the website, uh, which is our bread and butter. If you notice, these things run free for you. So, um, you know, we do have to make a living some kind of way. Uh, Plenty of ways to watch and listen. Facebook Live, hence the name Hogsports Live, always streaming there. Available on YouTube. Uh, Be sure to hit the notifications bell excuse me, after you hit subscribe and throw us a thumbs up and a like on either one of those channels. Uh, Apple Podcasts, throw us a five-star rating and write us a review. We'd love to have that from you. Spotify and Stitcher, as I mentioned, hawksports.com is just $1, H-A-W-G sports.com for your first month or 30% off your first year. So thanks again, everybody, for joining us. This has been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, and we will catch you next time.